Good afternoon. Good afternoon. All right. So I grew up, uh, my dad was a, a Baptist minister and they do this call response thing. And so if y'all don't give me any energy, we're going to have to do it all over again. <laughs> Who wants to, nobody wants to do that. Uh, but yes, yeah, so I am so happy to be here. Thank you, Matsy, for bringing me back again. Uh, the dean spending all day with me. That's commitment. Oh, when spring break, he came and spent the whole time with us. And I got a secret. The dean's got a treasure chest of money that he just loving to give out to everyone in this room. <laughs> so so we, want to, we want to see you all go to graduate school and we want you to all to consider the University of Nebraska Lincoln for uh, your choice. Dr. Perkins, thank you again for bringing me out and all the others that made this possible for us to just share this information with you. Uh, this is a great opportunity for you to network, great opportunity to learn about research and the importance of what it can do for your life, uh, but most importantly, learn about what grad school can do and put it into your plans. Your plans are gonna be put on supercharge or steroids if you get a graduate degree. And then the cool part, you're gonna get a chance to do it for free. How's that sound? Great. Yeah? Free? Free? All right. All right. So we're going to go. Um, so y'all know this song. And I always call on my, my homeboy, Pharrell, to say one little thing before I get started. He, uh, he's going to say one little thing. And I'm just going to let him say this. And then we're going to get into it. That's all I want him to say. Because <laughs> you're going to think I'm crazy with what I'm about to say. But... What I want you to know is that if you will go on to graduate school, again, it's going to be life changing. So before you came here today, who was thinking about taking a job? Just going straight from undergrad straight to a job. All right. We, we, we all family. We, we can be honest in here. Who was thinking about going straight to grad school? Raise your hand. Oh, I got short hands. <laughs> I said job. Oh, me. <laughs> Right here. All right, so I got I got my work cut out for me. Okay, I got a finger. <laughs> All right, but hey, we're gonna we're gonna hopefully get you out the fence or get you into the grad school pool. So let's go ahead and let's go. Now, regardless of what you've heard, this can change your life. Grad school. I have never. And I'm sure everyone who has a PhD in this room has regretted getting up in the morning and say, I hate having a PhD. I just hate it. <laughs> it's, the, it's the biggest burden in my life. No, but no, I, seriously, I'm being, being facetious, but this is something that can really, really help you. Um, now, who's heard the two, two frog story? Anybody ever heard the two frog story? <laughs> All right, you heard me say it. <laughs> All right, so. So I'm going to tell you the two frog story because I got a new, new uh, audience here. So there were two frogs. They were walking through the forest and they fell into a pit. And their friends didn't fall in the pit. So they were looking at them and saying, wow, <laughs> that's rough. That's a real rough uh, situation you got there. So those are the two frogs there. They're just sitting there in the, in the pit. And so as friends would say, damn, get out of that pit. <laughs> so he said, just give up. Just give up. But if you're a frog, what are you going to do? You're going to jump. You're going to jump, and you're going to jump, and you're going to jump, and you try to get out of the pit. Well, both of them started jumping. One said, you know what? This is hopeless. I'm not getting out of this pit. So he just kind of rolled over, and um, he didn't make it. But one kept jumping and jumping and jumping. And guess what? He jumped out of that pit. And when he got off and stuffed himself off, friends came over to him and his friend said, didn't you hear us say, it is no way you're gonna get out of this pit. He said, oh, he said, I, I read lips. I thought you guys were encouraging me. I didn't think that you were telling me to stop. But here's the thing. I want you to be, I want you to be this frog. The one that jumped out of the pit, I want you to be this frog here. I want you to be the frog that has on a cap and gown 
And when you will have your uh, advanced degree and be able to change your life, everyone in your lives and around you in your sphere of influence. And this is the one thing that I want you to pay attention to. Be careful who you listen to. Because people can rob your dreams just by listening to negative negativity. So right today, I'm going to give you a lot of positive. I'm, I'm going to be your biggest cheerleader. That's what I do. I go out and cheer you on to get your master's and PhD. So hey, so we're going to talk about gym. Who's heard about the gym program before today? Before you saw the brochure. <laughs> All right. I'm going to tell you a little bit about me. Talk a lot about why you should go to grad school. We've had some great presentations today. Uh, we're going to talk about some levels of degrees. You've heard about those as well. And some type of programs that you can deal with. And then I'm going to talk about the stuff that you really want to know about, right? And what's that? Money. The money. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> All right. So the gym program. Gym has quietly have been helping underrepresented students get their master's and PhDs for free for almost 50 years. And because of what we've done so long, so far, we've actually were uh, honored by the White House. We got the highest award that you can get in the nation uh, and what we do. And so if the White House said you're doing something right, you're probably doing a little bit okay, right? <laughs> so, but it's a great program and I wanna see every one of you. How, where are my seniors? I wanna see all of you all apply to our program. Where are my juniors? All right, where are my sophomores? Freshman? Any freshman? All right. Well, all you, I want all of you to apply uh, our program, and I'll tell you more about the gym program in a minute. Um, so our program really works like a marriage. We have universities and employers that all want to see you go to graduate school for free. All of them want to see you do it for free. And they help you get your master's and PhDs. So this is a great, great opportunity for you to do that. If you look at uh, this year, this will be the most people that will send to graduate school in the history of gym. Over 500 students will get a master's or PhD through the gym program. Uh, as a gym fellow, you get free tuition and fees uh, and a minimum of a stipend of 16K. Most of our students get uh, around 25 to $30,000 a year, uh, depending on the school they go to. Uh, and then the students that just apply to our program, they get an opportunity to be recruited by universities, other funding agencies. We give waivers for the GRE if you still need to take the GRE. And then um, just a great opportunity for you to go to grad school for free. All right. Don't put them to sleep. <laughs> All right. Here's some other things that we do. So we have a program called Grad Lab. So anybody that's a senior, junior, sophomore, or even freshman, the grad lab is a great opportunity for you to learn about going to graduate school. So I'm gonna give you like a, the short version of the grad lab. The grad lab is a more comprehensive program where you tell you why you should go to grad school, how to apply to grad school competitively, how to fund it adequately. And then we have role models at the end where you can add them to your portfolio uh, so that you have folks that can walk you through the, the whole process. Then in our conference, uh, our conference is, is every September. Uh, this year we'll be in Philadelphia. And also for gym fellows, so if anybody get a gym fellowship, I want you to come to the program. We do programs for our graduate students called FFP, which stands for Future Faculty and Professional Symposium. And that's where we don't just want you to go to grad school, we want you to finish grad school. And so we give you workshops that show you how to write a dissertation, how to um, pick your committee. We talked about committees and things like that. We talked about how to write a proposal and, and things of that nature. So the things that are gonna help you get through graduate school, that's what we do. Um, so this is a great opportunity for uh, if you get the gym fellowship. So now we're gonna talk about gra why grad school. I'd like to say it the other way. Why not grad school? Anybody? Why not grad school? Anybody? You moved your hand, so I'm gonna call on you. <laughs> Why wouldn't you go to grad school? You would go. All right. Who wouldn't go? Yeah. Oh, uh, you wouldn't go. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, let me let me um since 
I want to get on a flight today. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to talk about grad school. That's the truth. <laughs> That's the truth. Uh, I'm going to get on a flight today. So I'm going to, uh, I'm through this in for, this is the first time I'm going to go through this. Let's talk about first class versus coach. So when I first started flying like you all when I was a student and when I first started my career, I always look for the what? Cheapest. cheapest flight. That's right. And I did get the cheapest flight. I got the worst service. <laughs> um, and then as I kept flying and flying, I would always notice these people that were always on the flight first. They were drinking a beverage and, and I'm sweating trying to get back to my seat in the back of the plane. And I asked someone one time, I said, why did they get on first? They said, because they're loyal to us, or they pay more. Well, I knew I couldn't pay more. I said, tell me about this loyalty pay. And so the loyalty programs that they have through the major airlines and all of that, these are some of the things you get. First of all, you're going to the same place. So if I was going to Florida, the people that were sitting in first class, they were going to Florida. They just are gonna get there in a whole different type of experience. Like I said before, they're gonna have a beverage. If it's long enough, they're gonna get a free meal. So I'm smelling the cookies that they're, that they're cooking up front, but I'm, they're making me buy peanuts in the back. <laughs> so uh, then also, if you're in the first class, you get on first. And guess what else you do? You get off first. And then I noticed that every time those folks that were in the front of the plane, they also got their luggage first. I said, yeah, there's something to this loyalty thing. And so then I started thinking about grad school. So first of all, when you were undergrad, Oh, when I was an undergrad, I'm going to talk about when you were an undergrad. When I was an undergrad, when I got on campus, I thought about studying civil engineering, electrical engineering, chemical engineering, um, mechanical engineering. I had no loyalty to anyone. <laughs> None of them. I was like, you know, let's, but they all, they all said engineering. So I was like, what's the difference? But as I got in, I said, you know what? There's something to this electrical that I really, really like. So I got loyal to them. And then they said, you know, if you stay with us, we'll pay for you to go to school. With it. And the experience got a whole lot better because before I was paying for undergrad, but when I went to graduate school, they were paying. And they were doing more than just paying. They were paying me too. So when I say grad school is free, grad school is more than free, because you get paid. So that was the experience and so when I think about the grad school experience, this first class experience, that's, that's why I want to put it in the first class thing. First of all, you both, as a bachelor's degree or PhD, you both gonna get an engineering degree, but you're gonna sit in a totally different place and get uh, commencement, am I telling the truth? Because <laughs> you know, the PhD is gonna be sitting here in the middle, <coughs> where you're gonna have a bunch of people out in the, in the, other, in the other for the bachelor's, they're gonna be out there. And then my, my, um, my mentor, Dr. Adams, would say, Howard Adams, y'all heard his name a couple times. He'd say, they find somebody that can say their, their names very beautifully, but if you stop, someone will run on top of you <laughs> if you stop in the middle of the screen. But when the PhD, when you get a PhD, the whole commencement stops. And you stand in front of the screen, I mean, it's in front of the stage, and they put, their, put your hood on top of you. It's the most beautiful thing you ever see. And they'll say your name, you can wave at your mama. <laughs> and you can have a great time. So it's a great, great opportunity. Uh, first of all, there are fewer PhDs than bachelors at the commencement. Also, if you want to become an authority in your career, PhD will allow you to become an authority in your career. And then also, you can do more with your education. Um, you, can create, you create the projects. You don't have to work on a project. Uh, you get to create them and then give it to others to work it out. Most of the faculty members, they have graduate students after they come up with these great ideas and money, they give it to graduate students to figure out, figure out all the kinks. So it's a great, it's a greater process. And then finally, we, I heard somebody over here talking about money. Who where's my money guys? So, there you go. <laughs> yeah. So you want more money? Get a PhD. And we're gonna, I'm gonna give you a million reasons why you should. So I'm gonna keep going. All right, so my desire is for all of you to first finish your bachelor's degree, finish that, and then go on and get a PhD. Will y'all do that for me? 
All right. Okay, so I'm going to describe myself using microwave popcorn. Anybody know the science of microwave popcorn? Anybody? I got a new crew. <laughs> All right. So microwave popcorn in that bag has those little kernels in there, right? And every last one of those kernels has a little bit of moisture in it, just a little bit of moisture. And so when you put your microwave popcorn box, uh, bag in the microwave and put it on a turntable, open it up, you put in your time, what happens when you heat up water? What, what happens to it? Well, I heard it. I heard it over here. Time to stay. Oh, you, you, you old guy. <laughs> but it turns to steam. You're right. You're right. And so, so when you get this kernel, right, that kernel's hard. But as that steam starts to press on the walls of that kernel, what happens? It gets weak and weak. And then what do you hear? Eventually. Pop. That's right. And see, this is when I get excited. When I hear that first pop, that's when I go to the refrigerator and get my favorite beverage because it's about to get crazy. <laughs> so, so then, <laughs> then you go to and hit that little button, open it up, everything's smelling nice. You got the good microwave popcorn. So that's kind of my experience when I was going through from high school to graduate school. So first of all, I went, I was going, I said, I was pretty good in math and science. All of y'all, right? Somebody, when y'all went, all of y'all are engineers, right? Oh, everybody here is engineer? No, what are you? Accounting. 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 Accounting, which is good in math. <laughs> good in math. Right. Um, so I was told I was good in math and science, but they said it's going to be hard. Kind of like that wall of that curve. And so they, I said, but you know what? I'm going to take my, myself down to the University of Missouri, and I put myself on the turntable of STEM. I went around for one year. Not a lot happened. But at the end of the semester, I heard one pop. I made the dean's list. It's the first time I ever did anything like that. Felt good. Then the next thing, I got invited to do undergraduate research. Pop, pop. <laughs> <laughs> then it was it started getting crazy after that it's like -da 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 -da. I got an internship I got a scholarship uh, all these different things start happening fast forward a few years after starting as a freshman I go to graduate school and then they hit the button and I want all of you all to stand please everybody stand up because once you get your, once you go and fulfill all the requirements to get your dissertation done, they send you out the room, then they call you back in. <laughs> and they say, congratulations, doctor, you fill your name in. You have, you are now received, done everything we've asked you to do to get your PhD. So everyone in this room, because you're here, I want you to say your first name, last name, PhD, at the count of three. One, two, three. I just got your PhD, you mumble through it. <laughs> Come on now. Come on, I want you to say, give me some energy now. Count of three. One, two, three. Oh, yeah, yeah. You want to do it one more time? <laughs> one, two, three. <laughs> but if you have a PhD, what do they call you? Doctor. And when you say doctor, your voice got to drop like five octaves. Because <laughs> so, you're heavy. You're heavy. You're heavy. You got all this knowledge in your head. So I want you to say doctor and put your first and last name behind it. One, Two, three. Ooh, that sounds good. One more time. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got chills on this. All right. One, two, three. All right, give yourself a hand as you sit down.
<laughs> now, there's a book that I love. It's called Think and Grow Rich. Anybody heard of that book before? Think and Grow Rich. Uh, written by Napoleon Hill back in 1933 or 37. Um, but it um, says, there's a quote in that book that I always say uh, when I get in front of students. It says, if you can conceive it and believe it, you can achieve it. Anybody heard that quote before? Wow. That's where that quote came from. Uh, so today, you have conceived the idea of getting the graduate degree with your mentors and your friends and doing well, you're going to water that idea. And over time, that PhD. So right now, all of you all have PhDs. As soon as you walk out that door, it's going to disappear. <laughs> but right now, you're all have PhDs. Every last one of you got PhDs for the rest of the day. All right? And, uh, but yeah, but then after that, I want you to work on it. And then you're going to have one forever. So, I want to say, I'm going to just real briefly put up who I am. Got a little haircut before I came through. Uh, but I'm originally from the Midwest. I grew up here, so that's stuff that's going on outside. I've seen that before. Not fond of it, but I've seen it, that snow stuff before. I went to the University of Missouri. Now it's called Missouri Science and Technology. As you can see, I've worked quite a few places. Never knew what I wanted to do when I grew up. But it gave me an opportunity to meet a lot of people have a lot of folks in my network, and I got a chance to use my mind to take me around the world. Uh, so I want you to do the same thing. Use your mind to change your life. And now today I get a chance to um, talk to students, help them go to graduate school for free. I've been to most of y'all's campuses and had to, um, I'm gonna answer, I'm gonna answer. <laughs> yeah, let me talk to him. Let me talk to him. <laughs> All right. All right. So, just have a little fun. So, why grad school? As I said before, why not grad school? Uh, I'm going to go through a little bit of uh, another little exercise here. I call it detours to destiny. So the first one, uh, everyone in this room is going to get a bachelor's of science, bachelor's of arts uh, degree. And usually you get entry level jobs, right? That's where they're gonna start you. Uh, usually get lower pay. Who's excited about that? <laughs> Everybody's excited about that, right? <laughs> usually uh, potential layoffs, rocky. But if you get a bachelor's degree, I'd say you got basic strength, because you can basically do just about everything. Uh, you get a good foundation. Now, if you listen to us and go on to graduate school, at least get a master's degree, master's in science. You're gonna be a leader on the projects, uh, or CEO of your own company. <laughs> um, promotions and salary increases, who likes that? Like, all right, all right, all right, going up now. Get excited now, right? Get excited, all right. I call the masters more strength. Get more strength, stronger. But if you go for the PhD, the philosophy degree, you philosophy out of stuff. <laughs> and what I like to say is, you can define what you want. Your PhD, you get up in the morning, you can do anything you want. This morning, I felt like getting up to talk to you all. I get paid to do it. Am I getting paid? Yes, sir. Checks in the mail. Checks in the mail. All right. So you also get what I like to say, you pursue your higher destiny. Your purpose. One of the speakers this morning talked about purpose. This allows you to pursue your purpose and whatever you want to do. And that's what I like. And so then you become the light in the room. And since we're all engineers, our scientists almost all engineers. I'm gonna I'm work on you. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna make you an engineer. <laughs> I gotta give you at least one equation. What? what anybody know what that equation is? Yes. What is that one? Come on, give it to me. With Newton's. All right. So, if you want to become a force in your career, 
in your community. If you want to become a force, first of all, you have to have a mass. You got to build yourself up. But you got to do it faster and faster and faster and faster. And then you can be like some of those folks that are up there. Those are the folks that continue to accelerate and continue working on their craft. And one day you'll be on my slide if you do these things. And that's what I want to do. I want you all to do everything that is that you want to do in life. And a PhD, I want you to put that in place. All right, so why grad school? We'll get going. How long will you work in your career? The average professional, how long do they typically work? Anybody? 30 years. How many? 30 years. 30 years, okay. Who thinks more than 30? How many? 35, all right. Who thinks more than 35? Anybody? 40. 40. Who thinks more than 40? <laughs> the way the economy is, you might be working too. You know. <laughs> so since you like what you do, you should love what you do. You should be passionate. If you're going to get up and do something, trading your time, you should be paid. You should love what you do. Uh, and and, and one, one way I always say you found your passion is if you will get up and do it and you didn't get paid for it. That's passion. That's passion. Now, can you make a uh, can you make a uh, impact in your community without a graduate degree? Absolutely you can. But can you make maybe a bigger one if you had one? Absolutely. Pe people are going to think you're smart. You got a PhD, right? And you can ch you can change your mind. <laughs> but if you're not graduate, they're going to think that you're smart. Uh, <laughs> but this is, you can definitely make a big impact by having a graduate degree. And then the next one is become a leader. All of you are the leaders. Because the reason I know you're leaders is because you were invited here. This room could have been filled with hundreds of students. Because there's hundreds of students there that were you sit next to you in, in your classes. But you were invited because you're leaders. And that's why you're in this room. The next one is flexibility. As you saw the places I got a chance to work at. Um, it's given me many times to change my career. I finally found my passion. My passion is helping students. I get you're recording this. I won't say this, but <laughs> I would do this for free. 100%. I still want you. I would do this for free. Um, this is an awesome opportunity to invest in students. But this is, this is what we want you to do. And then finally, as I said, increase compensation. So we said 40 years. What are some of the average starting salaries? that you all are hearing, that students are getting as bachelor's level students. What are some of their average starting salaries? Give me some numbers. 65. 65, okay. 70, 80, 60. 60, okay. So I between 60 and 80. Let's just take, um, okay. Let's just take 65. Oh no, let's take 70. Okay, 70,000, right? Now, what's the class that, as an undergraduate, that you hated the most, that you just hated the most? What was the class that you hated the most? Geotech. Geotech, all right. Anybody else? Calculus. Calculus, <laughs> all right. Calculus. Diffy Q. Diffy Q, all right. <laughs> all right, a bunch of questions. Anything else? I usually get thermo. Yeah, thermal. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. You like thermal? I had to eat. You had to eat. Okay. What thermal do to y'all? Okay. How much money would you like to see in your check to take an advanced level of the class that you said you hated? How much more extra per year would you like to see in your check? At least a Okay, 5,000. Who wants to see a little bit more? 25? Let's take 20. 
right. So, um, so let's say twenty thousand dollars for taking that advanced level class that you didn't like for the rest of your life. Now we said forty years, right? Forty years is gonna work. Twenty thousand dollars extra in your check for the rest of that 40, 40 years. How much money is that? The pure math. How much is that? How much? We all engineers in here. I'm accountants. <laughs> so four times two is what? And then we're gonna put some zeros behind it. How much is that? K. But if you are a leader on a project and you are getting promotions and all that, it's probably more like a million dollars. So y'all gonna give me a million reasons why you should go to grad school. <laughs> so that's, that's, that's just the pure math. So not, not including the other things that you can do with your advanced degree. So you can write books, you can start your own companies, you can um, work for the university and or work at a company and work as an adjunct. There's multiple streams of income that you can have if you have an advanced degree. So I'm trying to open your minds up because I, I know money resonates with you all. So I wanted to hit you with the money right now so that you know that this is really something cool that you can do. Uh, so who's going to grad school now? Not yet? <laughs> all right, all right. So let's look at the numbers. Uh, so here's some of the numbers. If you get to high school over the course of a lifetime, is what you'll make. Bachelors, masters, and this isn't anything. PhD, and then professional degrees. So it's kind of money that we're talking about. And I always say this, even if you don't go on and get a master's degree or PhD, which we want you to do, you need to know your worth. So find a, a, re, a, a reliable source <laughs> and figure out what you should be asking for when you're sitting across from your potential, potential employee. Make sure you know you're asking for the right amount of money. Don't get shortchanged or lowballed in your salary. That's good? All right, so we've talked about a little bit of this. I always think of, you know, I played games. I used to play like sword games and I was always a sports person and all that stuff. So I always talk about putting on armor because I used to have to Dress up in football. That's why I'm limping today because my knees hurt. <laughs> but anyhow, uh, the first thing is, is essentials for being successful in grad school. You gotta know how to meet people. You gotta know how to talk to people. You gotta learn how to talk about your ideas and all of those. The next one is being flexible. You may go in doing this is um, the job that you want to do, or this is the kind of research you want to do. But you gotta be able to make me change. Let me give you one story. When I was inflexible as a graduate student, I had this idea I wanted to do each one teach one. And I told my advisor, this is what I wanna do. I wanna show students how to become the next level and whatever they're doing. So let me give you for instance, if you're a kindergarten, a first grader is the best one to show a kindergarten how to be a first grader, all the way down the line. And my advisor kept saying, that's not research. I said, it is. <laughs> and we kept going back and forth. Now, somebody did a presentation on this earlier that I heard. But um, after six months of my advisor and I kind of button heads, I went into his office. And he had an article sitting on his desk. And the title said, guess what? Each one, teach one. I said, he said, this is what you want to do? And first of all, he asked me to read the article. I said, yeah, this is exactly what I want to do. You know what he told me? He said, I want you to take your backpack. I want you to go down to the registrar's office. I want you to get a few ad drop slips. We're going to drop you from all your classes. And you can go to St. Louis and you can start this today. Because this is not research. As I collected my face off the ground, <laughs> I said, OK, what is research? He said, now that I got your attention, I'm gonna, we, we gonna, you're gonna go figure that out. I was so glad he did that because that's what changed my life. It virtually told me that I needed to understand he was my advisor. He's supposed to help me navigate through these waters. And I kept butting heads with him. 
And so once I got, he got my attention, we got down to business. And within a year's time after that, I was done. Because then I figured out the research was. Um, but let me tell you how I figured that out. I told you that was my advisor. I went to my mentor. I didn't realize I had a mentor and advisor until Dr. Blair was talking about it today. I had two advisors. One was the one that first gave me my opportunity to do research as a freshman. And then I had my advisor who helped me learn how to do research. So I went to my mentor, and my mentors showed me and told me what research was, and we got out of there. So again, everything you all are hearing here is real. This is real good stuff. I wish I had had them. I wouldn't have had to get schooled in front of my advisor that day. But anyhow, I digress. Learn how to be academic. You gotta learn how to talk like an academic. You gotta learn how to use those big words. My dad used to call me, use those big words, boy. <laughs> but um, yes, you gotta learn how to talk like an academic, walk like an academic, because that will give you the opportunities that you need and want. Also, you gotta learn how to pull your own weight. That means you gotta be able to work independently, but you also gotta be a team player. Engineering is a team sport. What does that mean? That means you gotta get in there and figure out where your role is and you play your role full out. And then finally, you gotta have mentors, coaches, advisors. These are really good. And they all can be the one one, one and the same, or they can be in, in, um, pretty different. Those are good things. So we talk about these degrees. So bachelor's degree, y'all are gonna get those. You're gonna be able to basically do everything. Oh, master's degree and PhD. I say, if you get a PhD, you can do anything. All right. So there are some other types of things that you can do with advanced degrees. So we talked about getting a master's PhD. MBA, so I this guy over here, but you can get into marketing and sales. Some of you may want to get into law. The U.S. Patent Attorney Office is always looking for folks with advanced, with a bachelor's degree to send them back and get their law degree. That's a great opportunity, and there's not a lot of you, so you can do that. Um, anybody wants to be a doctor? All right, so you know, you got this uh, medical research, uh, MD, PhD, and then finally, what everybody thinks that PhD is going to be well, supposed to come a professor or work at a research environment, but you can do that as well. You can do all of these when you advance the all right, and so again, this kind of talks about life goals and setting life goals. You should always have goals so that you know that you're on the right path. And you can see educational goals, all the way to celebration goals. I always put that one last. When I was in grad school, I had this ritual. If I did one good thing, if I got one good result, I had the shake of the day. I used to go to Steak and Shake and get a shake, a strawberry shake. That was my celebration. You gotta reward yourself for the things that you do well. Because why are you doing it? You're not gonna reward yourself, you know? You gotta do that. All right. I wanna talk about that, but I'm gonna keep going. That's a good story. I'll give you a short version of it. I used to be a vegetarian. And I met this woman from Texas who cooked really well. And she would always make me vegetables and all this good smell of meat. So I finally broke down. <laughs> and I ate, I got some meat, and then, then I went on board. But um, I went to McDonald's. So I stopped eating meat. Then I went to McDonald's, and they went from just quarter pounders to double quarter pounders. I was like, wow, I want one of those. But since I hadn't eaten one in a long time, I said, that's a lot of bread. So let me take those two patties and try to fold it over. I live in Texas now. So I'm trying to fold it over like a little taco. And then all this stuff started rolling down my arm. And it was just a messy thing. I said, there's a, there's a story to this. You know, they gave me two pieces of bread for a reason. So I can manage my mess. So when I started thinking about grad school, you all want to get a really good foundation for bachelor's degree. Really good 
Foundation. She put a PhD on top of it to help you manage life, help you get through life, and you can manage your mess. Because let me tell you, because you have a master's, a bachelor's, master's, or PhD, there's going to be some challenging times. But if you have a PhD, you'll be able to manage those times a lot easier with it than without it. So that's the, that's the, show, that's the clip note version. I'm just trying to throw that in. But now we're about to talk about some of this stuff. You know what I'm talking about? I want to get you up and dance on it. All right, money, money, money. All right, so, uh, okay. So when we talk about money, I'm going to break it out in three ways that you'll get money, particularly for grad school. You got need-based funding, merit-based funding, and then assistantships. If you go to grad school, you'll probably get funding in these three, three different levels. So um, the first one, um, I'm gonna go through these really quickly. So I like to break them out in two different ways, internal sources and external sources. So institutional aid, what does that mean to anybody in this room? Where's the money coming from if we say institutional aid? Where's it coming from? School. Coming from school. Coming from school. It's tied to the school. So we get institutional funds comes from school. Teaching assistantships. How many of you all have had graduate students teaching in your classes? Absolutely. That's how they pay for, for their graduate education. How many of you all are doing undergraduate research? Anybody working in the lab right now? Anybody doing undergraduate research? All right, next time I see you, I want your, everybody's hand to go up. I want you to do undergraduate research. Here's the reason why. It will allow you to learn how to do research so that when you go to graduate school, you can hit the ground running. So undergrad, and there's REUs. You all have REUs here? Uh, and, and you all have REUs. So REUs, which stands for Research Experience for Undergraduates. I want you to go through those because it'll teach you how to do research. And then you're going to have to get letters of recommendations from faculty. That'll allow you to get those strong letters of recommendations from faculty to do research with them. Um, and then grants. There are not that many grants for graduate students, but there are some. And then we have FAFSA. I mean, who, who fills out the FAFSA every year? All right. We're going to tell you why to fill that out. Loans. Now, did I say grad school was free? I, I didn't say that, did I? Uh, all right. So uh, I want y'all to repeat after me. Grad school is free. Grad school is free. Grad school is free. How many of y'all think that grad school is free? <laughs> None of you think that grad school is free? <laughs> at the end of this, at the end of this, you will definitely know that grad school is free. But loans, hmm, does that sound free? No. No. Now, where are my people that go work right out of the underground? Where are y'all here? I ain't got no hands now. <laughs> okay, okay, all right. All right, so when you go to, when you go to your first job, what's the first thing you're going to buy? Me, be, I'll be honest. What's the first thing you're going to buy? Apartment. Slash a car. Apartment. <laughs> you can't buy no apartment. You can't buy an apartment. You're going to rent an apartment. <laughs> you're going to buy a car, right? You're going to buy a new car or a used car? Absolutely, you're going to buy You You work all that time. You're going to get your new car. All right? And then you're going to work. What's the first? What's the next thing you're going to buy? House. That's right. We don't rent. We buy houses. That's right. I'm glad you said house. Uh, and then the next thing, you got to look good at work. What else are you going to buy? You going to buy suits. going to look nice. And then after that, they are going to have some nice work. Watch. Oh, glasses. Watch. Oh, man, you're going all out. <laughs> 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 and you buy all that stuff, but you're going to have a lot of no. debt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You're going to be in debt. <laughs> and so when you get all of those things, you're going to need a job to pay for all those things. But as a uh, graduate student, you won't be able to pay for all those things, um, although you could do do it as if you're working for someone and they're paying for grads, which is the next bullet. When you have employers that will pay for you to go to grad school, but they're not going to pay for you to go to grad school. Where are they going to pay for you to go to? I call it night school. Why are you going to go to night school? It's going to be working all day. <laughs> that's right. And it's not a bad thing. Don't get me wrong. You can do that. That is not a bad option. But if grad school is what? Three. Three. You shouldn't have to do that. 
and then we're going to talk about some external fellowships. So let's move on. So I ask who fills out the faster every year. Um, so this is how you get me based on you either qualify for it or you don't. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. Usually, with need based funding, you have to be a full full time student to get that. Then merit based funding. This is your payoff for being here, for doing well in class, for doing research, for doing internships, for all those things that you do. This is your payoff. This is the merit based funding that comes your way. Because grad school is definitely free. We're going to talk about all the things that the payoffs will lead to. Before we get into that, we'll talk about some departmental funding. So when you're applying to grad school, you're no longer really applying to the school anymore. You're really applying to a department, and even more specifically, to an area to work with specific faculty that are doing the type of research that you want to do. So you'll have fellowships and, and university-wide uh, fellowships and all kinds of diversity fellowships that will come your way just by doing well in school. Um, and then I'm going to talk about assistantships because if you get a PhD, most of you will do some type of assistantship. And um, again, these are great ways to pay for school. So research assistantships I start with, as you can see, they can span anywhere from 10,000 to 30,000. And, and it really is because universities get a different type, they call them appointments. So quarter time appointments or half time appointments. And so half time, what does that mean to anybody? Let's, anybody, what's half time? Anybody? Okay, let me ask you this one. How many hours are in a work week? What's happening? That's a half time appointment. So they're gonna pay you for 20 hours of work. They're gonna work you more than 20 hours, let me tell you that right now. <laughs> they're gonna work you a lot more than 20 hours, but they're gonna pay you for 20 hours. So, but seriously, um, a half time appointment is a really good appointment. And I think some schools are giving like two thirds appointments and a little bit more to uh, uh, three fourths appointments to try to encourage students to come to their institutions. Um, but if you get a research assistantship like this, you get tuition fees, typically comes with health insurance, and if you can align your research with your dissertation work, you're going to get paid to graduate. How cool is that? No? Yep, yeah, no? That's not fun? That's good? <laughs> All right. All right. And then teacher assistants. How many of you all want to be a teacher one day at the university? Okay. Let me ask you this. How many of you ever had a bad teacher? Everybody, everybody got an opinion about bad teachers. <laughs> so, with teaching assistantships, um, I say teaching is a learned skill. You have to learn how to teach. So I'm looking at all y'all, y'all, y'all. Uh, I'm losing. You. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna speed it up because I'm losing. You. But because I'm, I'm trying to be a good teacher. <laughs> I try to be a good teacher. But again, with teaching assistantships, you need that you typically get free tuition as well, uh, health insurance. And then most schools would like to see that you've had some experience managing a classroom before they put you in front of one of theirs. Um, so, yeah, these are good ones. And then finally, we got national competitive fellowships. I call those portable funds. What does that mean to you? Portable. What's that? The money follows you. You don't have to be at an institutional way, like we talk about the school funding. Portable funds are money follows you wherever you go. And these are good. That's good fellowships as well. So how many fellowships are out there for underrepresented students to go to grad school? Is it A? Is it B? Is it C? Or is it D? Who says that? A. Who says B? Got B. Who says C? All right. Who says D? Somebody says D. Who wants it to be more than D? All right. Well, I'm going to show you. It can, it can be more than D. All right. So if you were going to search for anything in life, where would you go? Me too. Me too. Google. <laughs> so Google, I always joke. If Google existed when I was going to grad school, y'all wouldn't have gotten any of the money. <laughs> I would have gotten it all. Because Google would have pointed me to it all, I would have applied for it all, and you wouldn't have gotten any of it. But Google is a very good first line of defense. The next one is 
grapes, uh, UCLA grapes. Google UCLA grapes. This one is a good uh, resource because it will allow you to find fellowships in your specific major. So that's a good one. The next one, grants.gov. When our gentleman is working, that's a good one too. <laughs> but but I, would, I would go with UCLA grapes first. Um, then there's um, ASE, American uh, Society for Engineering Education. Uh, that's a great one as well. They manage the um, Graduate Research Scholarship Program. Finance kind of lets you know what's going on in the world uh, in finance. Fast up, we talked about Sally Mae. Huh, what does Sally Mae do? Oh, yeah, we're going to leave her alone. <laughs> uh, uh, then FastWeb. How many of y'all have a FastWeb account? When's the last time you went to it? See you here? <laughs> exactly. But FastWeb does have opportunities for graduate students. So if you update your FastWeb account, um, that'll say point you some money. And then also, uh, if there are any international students, that's one resource there. But also, you can use Google and type in international graduate fellowships as well. And there may also find some opportunities for international students. Uh, so this is the time where I say, if you want to take a picture, this is the time to take a picture of the money slide. <laughs> so I'll give you 10 seconds to do that. I'll get down so I'm not in the picture. I want you to put me on Facebook. <laughs> All right, everybody get it that wants it? All right. So I'm going to spend time talking about the National Fellowship, and I'm talking about the Gym Fellowship, and then I'm going to get out of here because I have a colleague that's going to be speaking to you about how to get a strong um, scores in your standardized scores. So these are some of the ones we're going to talk about. The Graduate Research Fellowship is the Rolls Royce of all fellowships, I think, anyway. Um, you get three years of support to use over five years. Uh, I stopped by dating the slide. The last time I checked, it was thirty-four plus thousand dollars. Um, now, how many of y'all think that sounds good? All right, all right. Who doesn't think that sounds good? All right. Who makes more than that right now? Okay, you make more than that right now. <laughs> that's good. That's good. That's good. But you got to work for it, right? Yeah. They gonna get at you. Dude. <laughs> um, but then you also, the school gives you uh, for tuition and fees, and so that's the money you get to live off of. Um, and then, you know, yes, this is the one that you want to work with faculty, so if you have faculty in your life, this is the one you want to work with faculty on. Um, Sloan, uh, Sloan, I believe is, they're, they're, I think Sloan is going away, but I believe this is the last year for Sloan, so you should definitely apply for the Sloan Fellowship. Uh, there's a really good fellowship out there, and great community. Um, NASA, who's thinking about maybe getting a space exploration? Anybody? <laughs> Not really? All right. Uh, but this is a great fellowship. It's $30,000. Everything I've shown you so far has said $30,000. Um, NASA also gives you an internship as well. And this is one that's cousin to the one I just showed you, but it's through Harriet Jenkins Fellowship. A little bit less, but there's still 20,000 for the PhD, 24,000 for the PhD, 18,000 for the master's, and they give you offsets and things of that nature. So this is a good fellowship as well. Uh, the SMART fellowship. The reason I put this one up, because this one has a service requirement. What does that mean? That means if they fund you, you go work with them. I don't look at it that way. If they fund you, you have a guaranteed job once you finish. That sounds pretty good, right? You don't have to go look. Jobs are already there for you. And you'll get a nice stipend, all your tuition and fees covered, health insurance, book. I mean, this is, this is the works. A really good fellowship. And then uh, the DOE. DOE wants you to go to grad school for free as well. 35000 the tuition, internships, really good stuff. So those are good fellowships. And then the uh, National Defense of Science and Engineering Graduate Fellowship. EDSEG. This is another great one. $30,000. This is crazy, right? They get all this money to go to school for free. This is great. And we said the average starting salary for undergrads were about, what we say, about $60,000, right? 
<laughs> All right, so let me put this in perspective for you. If you go to work for anyone, I call that 50% income. You know why I call that 50% income? Because you want to see 50% of it. <laughs> Let's, let me tell you why. What's the first thing that's going to come out of you? Before you get your check, what's the first thing that comes out of your check? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, you go work. Uncle, Uncle Sam will get his first. Right. And if you're smart, what's the next thing that should come out of it? Savings. Uh, what's that? Savings. Savings. There you go. Very good. Very good. You have retirement. And then you get to take the rest. After you take all that out, you're about 50% of that. So, so yeah, so there's, so there, again, but you're going to get a chance to wake up in the morning, do research, something that you really want to do, and get the same amount of money. That's a good point. All right, and so then Ford Fellowship. I like Ford because Ford wants to start at the beginning, and take you all the way through, even through postdoc. Uh, postdoc is someone that finishes a degree, and then they want to go off and work with a faculty member. So they give you money to go work with a faculty member. And you say, I just want to come do research with you. I'm bringing my own money. So Ford gives you the opportunity to do that. So this is a great, these are all great fellowships. But I don't work for any of those. I work for Jim. So I got to talk about Jim before they kick me out of here. So, uh, so the Jim Fellowship, what is this all about? That's one of my um, really good uh, mentees. Eric, Dr. Eric Huey, that's the day he got his PhD. He, uh, where are my Southern folks? All right, so that's where he went for undergrad. Um, so again, Jim, what we do is we try to make sure that you go to grad school for free. Uh, I talked about we do it through a marriage between employers and universities. Uh, we sent over 5,000, almost 5,000 people to grad school so far. You go to a gym school, they pay all your tuition and fees. You get an internship in the summer where you make, any, our students work anywhere from ten to $18,000 over three months, depending on their major. And then this is a gym program. So you go to a gym school, we have 130 universities, as I mentioned. We have two programs, we have the master's track and the PhD track. The master's, the minimum that you'll get is $16,000 in stipend over two years, plus tuition and fees, fully covered, plus you make, you get two paid internships over the summer. The PhD, you get five years of support, and you get one internship, that's all you're required to do. Uh, and then the rest is just, uh, you know, full funding. <laughs> all right, Dr. Jones, Dr. Jones. <laughs> right. So I still work. You, you gotta apply. It's cold in here. Um, our application starts July 1st, and our, our application will end mid-November. I always say November 15th. Say November 15th. November 15th. What happens on November 16th? Oh, you're, early, you're early for next year. <laughs> um, then you also need to apply to three gym universities. You got 130 options. So University of Nebraska is one. <laughs> and we want you to apply uh, by their deadline or no later than January 15th. Uh, most of you will know if you have a gym fellowship by then. March 15th, and then you go uh, let us know where you plan to go to school, and then you intern in the summer. This is the only requirement of the gym program. You must do your internship. If you're a master's student, two internships. If you're a PhD student, one internship. That's all you're required to do. The rest we want you, the only other requirement we have is that you finish. That's it. And then uh, there's our calendar. Uh, I said November, you're, no, November 15th. If you are being courted by one of our employers, they typically are calling between November through March, and then you let us know where you plan to go to graduate school, and then you do an internship in the summer, and then you start grad school in the fall. It's just that simple. Now we have two programs uh, that I will mention really briefly. If you don't get selected by an employer, you still can become a gym fellow as a gym university fellow. Those are master's only students, full tuition and fees, uh, which is still good because most master's students don't get full tuition and fees. Uh, and associate fellow, which is coming master's or PhD, 
and you get mad, you get tuition fees and a stipend. This is a pretty cool deal. Uh, so, uh, and then obviously the other one is the employer for all. So in conclusion, seek out the information. Uh, find it all, organize it, make sure you get all your deadlines in place, and then make sure you apply on time. Because one way to miss out on an opportunity is to miss the deadline. So uh, here's one other slide that you might want to take a picture of. This is just some more information about graduate school. And, um, and then finally, I went to the studio, guys, just for you. Say just for me. Say just for me. So I went, I went to the studio just for you. Um, and I'm going to skip this one, because this, this is a good story. But I, I, I want to get to the studio one. And I made something for you. It's the first time anyone has ever heard it. So I want y'all to let me know how I did. All right? <laughs> All right? <laughs> Sit down. Thank you very much.